Oh, hey there. It's Ross Frederick here with Run It Down with Ross. We're here at the Dakota Zoo. Oh, hey, Christine. Oh, hey. Let's go take a look around. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Run It Down with Ross. I'm here with Terry at uh, the Dakota Zoo. Um, Terry, tell us a little bit about the zoo. What makes uh, the zoo special and unique? Well, the zoo has been special for the Bismarck Man Am community since it started in 1961. And it was a dream of Mark Christensen, the founder, that he would have a zoo that for the benefit of, of our really region. And so after all these years, almost 60 years now, um, the zoo has become many things for many people, but all in all, it's a place to, to come for entertainment, but it's our goal to teach you something while you're here. Well, absolutely. So I, I see that you guys have lots of people that do trainings throughout the day. Tell me a little bit more about that. The training is, is one of those things we've probably been doing for about five years now, a formal training program. And for example, these bears, um, in the old days when we needed to vaccinate them or deworm or something like that, it was it was fairly traumatic. It's, you get the dart gun out. Um, that's not a way I want to get vaccinated. Somebody <laughs> shooting at me from 50 feet away. Where this way, we can get them here, they're used to coming up. We can just gently nudge them with the syringe pole that has a needle on it and it's it's all over. They're, they get treats the whole time. And, and so really, that's kind of the theme of what our training is. It makes, makes it easier for us to do our jobs. It's fun for the people to watch and exactly. it has a, a very great purpose for it. So yeah. that's, a, that's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. So I, you guys have been a member of the Chamber EDC since I believe it was 93. Sure. So thank you very much for your membership. We appreciate yeah. that. Um, one of the other things that we were kind of wondering about is what have you guys done with the COVID-19 situation to kind of um, mold your zoo around the restrictions that are out there? Sure. Well, we were closed for six weeks. Um, and so what that allowed us to do during that time was put together a plan. How do we, how do we reopen safely? The zoo is a big place. We've got 90 acres. Um, I think if we figure out how many people we could have on the path, it's like 15,000 people. Well, we've never had that, so that's that's not a problem for us. Um, but things like um, have two brand new trains, so we added uh, plexiglass there so that we could divide up those areas. Each seat then becomes its own little cubicle, and so we've kind of established safety zones. Um, of course, signs all over the place that talk about um, social distancing. Um, we're doing sanitizing just constantly. Um, even our playground, we're, we're sanitizing several times a day. So Terry, tell me a little bit about uh, what's coming up with the zoo. Do you have anything cool that's happening? We do. Well, cool, first thing that pops into my head is we're building a new freezer. Um, zoo visitors won't see that, but it's really important to us. Our current freezer has lasted for about 50 years. It's about 8 foot by 10 foot. Our new freezer is about 20 foot by 20 foot. Oh, wow. And so we've got new animals like penguins coming on. Penguins? Got a new Who exhibit. doesn't love penguins? Yeah, and so they take a lot of food, they take a lot of frozen fish, so we need a bigger freezer for them as well as things like the bears and the, the big cats and things like that. So, But speaking of penguins, we're excited to uh, start construction on that. Actually, construction has started. We're ready in the ground, ready to, to put footings in and things like that in the very near future. And so that's that's kind of what's new at the zoo. That's what's coming. Well, that being said, why don't we take a look around and look at some other animals? Okay, sounds great. Right. Right. Thanks, Terry. Here's what's next. Welcome back, everyone, to Late Morning with Ross. Uh, we have Christine here, as uh, as always. And uh, I just wanted to ask a little question, Christine. What is your favorite animal? You know, I think my favorite animal is. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, best dog ever. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. Why is that? You know, my dog, she has this special trait. It's called soul gazing. I don't know if you've heard of it. When she looks at me, she looks into my soul. Yeah. Alrighty then. So moving on, please welcome Allison from the Dakota Zoo here. Uh, tell me a little bit about our first guest that we have here. So we brought a very special guest for you to meet today. His name is Monty, um, and you'll see why his name is Monty, um, judging by what the animal is. He is a ball python. Yes, he is. Monty, obviously Monty Python, that's where he got his name from, um, is a ball python, and they're also known as royal pythons sometimes, because believe it or not, as many people don't love snakes, 
Um, the people in Africa, where they're originally found, love um, these snakes, and they used to wear them as jewelry to distinguish royalty um, among Ooh. their classes. Oh, so wow. when you think of a snake, you should be thinking of beautiful jewelry, actually, um, <laughs> and think of Monty here. So things that I am not going to do <laughs> is wear this fella as a piece of jewelry. Um, it's very crazy. You can feel how muscular they are. Yep, like, every movement you can yeah, feel between you can your feel fingers. The, Yep, there he goes. Okay. I don't know. Thanks, Allison. Um, I'm going to give you Monty back here. Okay, thank you. And uh, thanks again for, for letting us uh, hang out with you and Monty here. And uh, we'll move on to the next guys. You'll have a hard time missing our next segment. Welcome back, everybody. Allison, who do we have here? These are our African spurred tortoises, um, Leonard and Sheldon. So this is Leonard, this is Sheldon. Um, the African spurred tortoise is the third largest in the world. Um, our guys are actually kind of small even. So Leonard here is 20 years old, which sounds old, but is not in turtle, turtle years. Um, and then Sheldon here is 13. And so they can get up to 150, even 200 pounds. Um, and they can live up to 70, even 100 years. There's been known tortoises that live over 100 years. So as you can tell, they have a long life ahead of them and they have more to grow even. Excellent. Can we give them a little snack? Yeah, it's, it's feeding time here. I'll let you set this one in front of Sheldon there. They're steady to eat. Um, they get a salad, oh. they get a watermelon tree today, and then a specialized tortoise pellet that gives them all their nutrients that they need other than the salad. But they're mostly herbivores, so... Yeah. so Sheldon looks a little bit more timid today. He's <laughs> like, who's this fella? And uh, <laughs> he's going right after it. Wow. Allison, thank you very much for giving us the information on, on these tortoises. Uh, Christine, you have some uh, information to share with us? Yeah, yeah I do. Uh, this is called the ukulele and it is part of the lute family. It makes a lot of unique different sounds. Lute I've family. had I've had this one since I was 10. Okay, yeah. Can, are you going to play us a little tune? Yeah, yeah. So you don't know how to play that at all, do you? No, but it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, Gary? Uh, this is our production, uh, Emu Gary. Do we have time for one more song? Hit it. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's catch up to our next guest. We'll be right back with our next segment. Allison, who do we have next? This is Leela. Um, she's one of our Bengal tigers. Um, so she is 12 years old. She's going to be uh, 13 in actually a month. Um, and she lives here uh, with another female uh, that we got with her at the same time. They were cubs together and they've grown up together. Um, and so Bengal tigers are endangered species. They're obviously well known, well loved. Um, and we do a lot of training here with our tigers at the zoo. So I was going to have you help me with I'm a couple all, training all demos. So, yeah, fantastic. The main reason we do training here at the zoo um, is to help us get a better visual, better care of the animals. We're not training circus tricks. We're training them to participate in their care. So this is called the target stick. Okay. And so what we're going to ask her is to put her nose on the target. So we're going to say, Leela, target. And once you put your nose uh, on the target, she gets it. So I'm going to have you actually do that. Okay. So you're going to do it a little bit higher up here, okay? Leela, right. target. Hey, very good. Good girl. <laughs> so you can see amazing. they're very large. Yeah. They can be 250 to 300 pounds in the wild. It's even bigger than that sometimes. Um, and they're mainly carnivores. So we're feeding them some steak as a reinforcement. Thanks again for letting us come out and, and yeah. see the tigers and see all the animals that are out here. And uh, we'll see you guys next time with Late Morning with Ross. Thanks for everybody for coming down and, and watching this episode. Thanks for the Dakota Zoo team. We appreciate you giving us the time and showing us all these awesome animals down here. Make sure you visit their website to see what you can do down here at the zoo. And thanks everybody for your membership. And uh, I don't know if I'm trained for this. How long have you been waiting on that one? I don't know. We'll see you next time with Run It Down with Ross. <laughs>